Hello everyone. Here we're going to look at a nice equilibrium example uh, where you can, it shows you how you can determine an object's center of mass with two scales. So the center of mass of a person may be determined by an arrangement such as the one shown in the figure below. A light plank rests on two scales separated by a distance of d equal to 1.8 meters and reading fg1, so the scale on the left, 485 newtons, and FG2, on the, for the scale on the right, equal to 315 newtons. Determine the distance of the woman's center of mass from her feet. So let's put some of these numbers on here. We've got FG1 equal to 485 newtons, and FG2 equal to 315 newtons. It shows you the distance from the scale on the left to the scale on the right is a distance equal to 1.80 meters. And you'll notice her head's resting on the left scale and her feet are resting on the right scale. And what we're trying to do is determine where her center of mass will be. So somewhere approximately there, we could guess. But that's the distance we want to find. So let's start off by defining our axes our orientation. So if we keep this as a positive x, a positive y, and z out of the plane, positive z out of the plane, where this rotation is our positive rotation. We're going to define this point here as the zero point. So we can define that as x equal to zero. Then somewhere within here, we don't know the distance yet, but let's call that the x center of mass. And lastly, then at this distance here, we have an x equal to d, which is equal to 1.5, whoops, pardon me, 1.8 meters. What do we have for forces? Well, she's pushing down on the scale such that it registers 485 newtons, or at least her weight is. And that means the scale is pushing upwards on her, or on the plank that she's laying on. And so there's an upward force here of Fg1. And likewise, there's an upward force here of Fg2, and a downward force, right where I wrote my center of mass, a downward force here due to her weight. And so we know this value, and we know this value, but we don't know this value, and we don't know this value for our center of mass and our weight. I marked this as x equal to zero, and I'm also going to define that as my origin or my pivot point. So x equal to zero, I'm also calling my uh, pivot point. And you'll notice then, if that's my pivot point, this force, the weight, is torquing, causing a downward torque or a rotation in the clockwise direction or a negative torque. And so if I use my right-hand rule, you'll notice that that torque is pointing along the negative z-axis. It's clockwise and, it, and negative. So all of those are telling me the same thing. And Fg2 wants to rotate it upwards in this direction. Maybe I'll put that a little closer to the force so it doesn't get misinterpreted. Okay, so I've got this force here that wants to torque it upward in that direction. It's a positive torque. And by right-hand rule, it would point along the positive z-axis. OK, what do we do with that now? Well, there's no x components to the forces here. And so I really just have the two equations that I'm going to be dealing with, fy equal to 0, or the sum of the fy's, and the sum of the torques equal to 0. But that's OK. Two equations, and I only have two unknowns. My center, where is my center of mass, and what is her weight? And in fact, you'll notice from the equations itself, it tells me that I've got a positive Fg1, a positive Fg2, and a negative weight, all equal to zero. And that's already telling me pretty much what I know, that the weight, the total weight, is just going to be the sum of those two scale readings. And they've said here intentionally that it's a light plank. And that's basically saying I can ignore it. They haven't given any mass for it. It's light, doesn't contribute to the problem, and so I'm going to um, assume it's negligible. For the torques, what have I got? I've got Fg1. 
It's acting at a moment arm or distance from the, uh, or the pivot point of zero. And so it means I take that term out of the equation. I want to keep the weight in here because I'm going to solve for it. So I want to be able to keep it in my equation. And so my weight is acting at a moment arm of XCM. So that distance XCM is the moment arm for my weight. And lastly, I've got FG2 acting with a moment arm of D, equal to all equal to zero. Solving for my center of mass, the distance of my center of mass then. And so I end up with a final distance for my center of mass being located at 0 0.709 meters. So not the halfway point, which would be 90, but more like 70 centimeters, probably somewhere closer to that. And so using two scales, positioning them above the head and the foot, I easily have a single them position so that I have a single distance. The distance between the scales is also the distance from the head to the foot. I place the pivot point at one end of that, so in the head in this case, and then I solve for the sum of the Fy components equal to zero and the sum of the torques equal to zero to find the center of mass.